I'm Bruce Gregerson, uh, Senior Advisor for Theology and Faith of the United Church of Canada. The moderator has just released a blog, and in that blog speaks out of his own experience uh, to the question of physician-assisted suicide and euthanasia. In part, he's doing it because the Supreme Court this week begins hearings on this particular situation. What the moderator is dealing with uh, is his assumption, or is his, his encouragement of the Church, uh, to accept the right of individuals to make difficult moral choices in their own lives in circumstances where physician-assisted suicide uh, might be their desire. What he's saying and what he's speaking is sometimes seen as different than what many other churches would say, and, and perhaps that's part of the challenge, because more often than not, people uh, outside the church assume that the church has a unified voice and that all churches, by virtue of <clears throat> what they've heard from a few, are opposed to any uh, decisions that would impact uh, uh, the extent or, or the, uh, the choice of life or death. And in fact, I think there is a very real scriptural and religious argument to say that's not necessarily the case. And in fact, the United Church falls very much in a tradition in which we speak about the rights of individuals to have moral agency in the face of very hard decisions about life. Part of our um, experience um, is before us this, this week because Gloria Taylor, uh, who is one of the uh, persons at the heart of the Supreme Court hearing, was a United Church member, known across the church, covered in a number of Observer articles. And when we've done surveys across the church, we've, we've uh, discovered that a large majority of United Church members believe in uh, that they should have the right uh, to, uh, to seek physician-assisted suicide in circumstances similar to Gloria's or in other circumstances. So, why is that the case? I mean, why is it that the majority of United Church members believe this, and in fact the majority of people in society believe this, regardless of what church they're facing, or, or they're members of? I think, in part, because there are some very common sense aspects uh, to what they understand life to be about that connect with also our understanding of faith and who God is and God's presence. So where we base our uh, direction in the United Church of Canada uh, where it comes from are some very basic affirmations. The first is that death is not the enemy. Uh, we have never as a church believed that we should resist death at all costs. Death, in fact, uh, is part of life. And regardless of, uh, of the circumstances um, of, our, uh, of our life and our death, we affirm that God is with us. So death isn't something to be feared. Uh, it is something to be, uh, ex to be engaged in, in the same way that we engage issues of life. Secondly, life is about relationship. Uh, and we say that because God is about relationship, because the very essence of God's person in a triune existence is about relationship uh, both with, uh, with the Godhead, as we would say religiously, but also with humanity. And that's the nature of the incarnation, God's choice to become incarnated in human life. And what that says to us is that we're par part and parcel of life. And our engagement uh, as, as part of God's incarnation uh, is to be responsible for sometimes very difficult choices. Always uh, contained, I think, uh, within the well-being of an individual, doing no harm, valuing life. But life itself uh, is not absolute. We certainly believe life is sacred. But life is not absolute. God's love is absolute. God is love, the scriptures say. And so when we affirm that, what we speak about is the right of an individual to grapple with difficult choices of life. We did that in the uh, significant work that we faced around abortion. Um, and where we came down was that it's a matter between a woman and her doctor. Because we can't uh, determine every circumstance that an individual has, nor should society be in a position of, of deciding for an individual, a woman in a very uh, difficult circumstance, for that woman about how she might make a choice about her own body. It's about relationship. Um, and in the same manner, I think we're in a situation where we would want to say that an individual who is struggling with an end-of-life decision in the midst of pain, uh, perhaps, in the midst of loss of facility, has to also grapple with hard choices. Um, who has the right to do that? 
who has the right to determine the choices that an individual makes in a circumstance that they alone face. And I think what we affirm as a church is that individuals have moral agency. They have the capacity because of the Incarnation, because God's presence is in our midst, because relationships count and how they engage with their doctor and with other loved ones have a bearing on what decisions are made. It's the individual ultimately who makes the call. All of that's part of the laws uh, contained within the laws of the land. And so I don't think that in any case would we want to suggest uh, that we can step outside of the constraints of our society. But that's why the moder moderator has said in his blog, we would support a change in the law. It's time now for Canada to recognize the dilemmas that people face and to change the law to allow a greater amount of freedom in the choices of, that we face at the end of life.